What's up everybody? It's Andy with LightenUpAndShoot.com and today I'm going to teach you guys a little bit about skin retouching. Now I know there's a billion ways to do it. There's plugins, there's a whole bunch of techniques, but this one in particular is perfect for when you want to save as much pore texture as possible or in this case I want to save her freckles. I love freckles. It's one of my weaknesses for women. And Jenna here, our model, has absolutely gorgeous freckles. You don't understand how it drives me crazy when a client tells me to retouch an image and to get rid of freckles. I love them. So, as you can see, she's got gorgeous, gorgeous freckles. And I want to soften her skin just a little bit. And I want to keep the freckles. So how do I do it? I'm going to show you guys right now. The first step is to always make a copy of your background layer. And I do that with Control J. Or you could just drag the layer, uh, drag the background layer to the new layer icon, and it'll make a copy. And the first thing I'm gonna do, and the first thing you guys have to do, is make sure that all the blemishes are cleared off of the skin. Luckily, Jenna has awesome skin, only a couple little blemishes that I have to fix. And I will have another video just on how the healing brush, the clone stamp tool works, all that stuff. But for sake of quick demonstration purposes, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown. The first thing I do is create a new blank layer. Click on that. See, it's blank. Make sure it's selected, and I, and I rename this to retouching. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in to the blemishes. I'm going to go to my healing brush, which is J is the shortcut. And I'm going to make sure that sample all layers is selected. If that is not selected, I can't do anything because I am not... I'm retouching on a layer that is completely transparent. So, with sample all layers selected, uh, you have a couple of other options here. For those of you with Adobe Photoshop CS5, Content Aware is going to be your best option. Uh, for those of you with CS4 or below, you're only going to have Proximity Match or Create Texture. I recommend Proximity Match works really, really well. Okay. All right. So, since I'm using CS5, I'm going to take advantage of the uh, Content Aware. My healing brush is selected, and all I'm going to do is tap on the blemishes, okay? One of the secrets to this is just to tap, because I don't want to, I want to be able to change the pixels, but not affect as little as, as possible, okay? So I'm tapping, 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 and I'm just getting rid of the blemishes that I don't like, just like this here, and I'm just tapping, okay? One of the advantages of working on a transparent layer is, let's say I mess up here, okay, I messed up on purpose, and I just keep going. I didn't realize that I messed up there. Just don't worry about it, guys. I just keep going. I'm just tapping away, fixing all these blemishes, fixing all these blemishes, and I'm tapping. Let's get rid of the scar here. I don't really like it. And I'm just tapping, tapping, tapping. I could just get rid of this just a little, little, tiny bit. And this is just for sake of demonstration, so I'm going faster than normal. The longer you guys take on this, or the more precise it is, the better your image is going to be. Skin cleanup is one of the most boring but necessary steps when it comes to uh, retouching, especially for high fashion. Okay? And now I'm like, oh my god, my eyeball. I can't hit Control-Z that many times. I can't hit Command-Alt-Z that many times to go back. I could use the History Brush. But, since I am on a transparent layer, here's all my retouches. So all I have to do is hit E for the eraser tool, or just click on it right over here, and just erase away. And there you go. So that is one of the main reasons I, I'm always retouching on a transparent layer. Okay, that looks pretty good. And of course, I could always go through her hands and, her, and the rest of her body. But, for this demonstration, it looks phenomenal. So... Now that I'm done with the retouching, what I want to do is I want to merge these two layers. So I do that by clicking on the retouching layer, make sure it's blue, holding the shift key down and clicking on the layer right below it and hit command E and that will merge the layers or control E on a PC. And now what I want to do is I want to create another copy of this retouching layer because this is where all my fixes are. And again, I could hit command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC, or I can just drag this to the new layer. 
And see how it says retouch and copy? I'm going to rename that to softening. Once that's in softening, I'm going to do a couple of things. The first is I got to change my blend mode over to vivid light. Looks weird, I know. Don't worry, you're in good hands. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to invert this layer because I don't, I just don't think she's looking freaky enough. So I'm inverting it, and I do that by hitting Control I on a PC or Command I on a Mac. And now it's just a freaky thing of nothing. Um, that's okay. It's normal. Next thing I do is because I love being able to go back and fix and polish off, so I do. I want to do it non-destructively. And to do it non-destructively, I have to convert this layer to a smart object. So I right-click on the layer, make sure it's all selected in blue, right-click on it, go to convert to smart object. You see this little logo down here? That means it's a smart object. So that means anything I do is going to be non-destructive. Photoshop is saving all those pixels so I can come back and edit them later. I love smart objects. And again, I'll have an entire video just on smart objects. But for now, just know that that's how they work. Okay. Once that's selected, I'm going to come up to Filter. And since everything is inverted, I'm actually going to go to Blur and Gaussian Blur. And this is actually going to sharpen my image. If See how I'm zoomed out here, guys? If I want to zoom in and I am and I have a window open, I hit Control plus on a PC or Command plus on a Mac. And to zoom out, it's Command minus or Control minus. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is I just want to sharpen until I see her freckles. See how it's all sharpened and cool and nice and everything? And I'm using Gaussian Blur, but since I inverted, everything is backwards. Just trust me on this. At three pixels, I'm pretty good. Uh, you, with your image, is going to vary. The higher the resolution, the more pixels you're going to have to use, and so on. It's all just to uh, taste. And don't worry, it's a smart object anyway, so we can always come back and fix it later. Once that's done, I have an image that looks weird. It's sharpened. It's, it looks kind of cool if you're artistic. Uh, but what we want to do is we actually need to now soften that skin. And we're going to go up to our filter once again. Go to other and go to high pass. As soon as I click on high pass, my image is now going to look normal. And you're going to actually see the softening. The higher the pixel radius, the softer the skin. You don't want to go too high because you get some weird color fragments. Um, I'm pretty happy around 7. For this image, again, it's all going to depend on your image size and what your taste is. I always like to go a little bit overboard because I can always regulate that later with opacity. Okay, so now I have everything is softened. If we zoom out, you're going to see that her dress is screwed up, the background screwed up, her hair is all messed up, her eyes are out of focus. It's got a weird kind of glowy look. And hey, if you love that, then you're done. But I don't. So what I want to do next is I want to make sure that softening up here is selected. This is a mask, and we'll talk again in another video. But just make sure that softening is selected, and I'm going to create a layer mask by going down here. It's all in white, and you guys should know by now that anything that's white is going to show the effect. Anything that's in black is going to hide the effect. So I want it to be all completely black, so I'm going to invert the mask, Control-I again, and it's going to turn it all into, into black, because white is the opposite of, I mean, black is the opposite of white. Everything's back to normal. And then what I want to do is take my brush with white and I'm just going to paint where I want the softening to take place. Okay? And I don't want to touch her lips. I don't want to touch the tip of her nose. It's really important. I don't want to I don't want to touch her eyes. I don't want to touch any of that stuff. I just want to make sure I'm going over the areas that I want soften. Yes, I can soften all her entire body and just keep going and going and going and going and going. Um, but it's completely up to you, okay? This is a demonstration. I just want to show you guys how to do this. All right? Once that is done, if I mess up, for example, let's say I do paint and I go over her mouth, all I have to do is hit X to change the colors back to black or paint with black and and I just sharpen a 
away. Make sure that my eyes are, are, are not being affected by the softening. And that, guys, look at her freckles. Her skin is softer. If it's a little bit too much, I can always just lower the opacity. Let's see. This is the before and the after. Before and after. I mean, it's a lot better. And if it's still a little bit too much, I can just lower my opacity a little bit. Before and after. It's a subtle difference. Again, she had really beautiful skin from the beginning. But now she has even more beautiful skin. And guess what? All of my gorgeous freckles that I love are still there. You see that? All right, guys. I'll have even more detailed instructions on the website. Any questions? Like always, leave it in the comments. Follow us on Twitter. This is Andy with LightNumberShoot.com. Over and out.